All right, it's time to get some news out here on Truth Broadcast Network. And if you don't know yet, you can click on the News tab up here on the network. But that's only going to get you the last couple hours of news. As you see here, the last story says five hours ago. So ideally what you want to do is go to the Category Archives and click on News. That's going to get you all the news. And in fact, once you do that and the page opens, as you can see here, you've got different views. Set it on this one all the way to the right, and you're going to get the full video on each one of them. You can open them all in different pages, different windows if you want. That gets the network more hits, which I guess counts for something. I don't know. But if you do it this way, like no other website will allow you to do, you can just play it all right here on this page. This is the best page on the Internet if you want to know what's happening in the world. So we can just go ahead and click it. Well, a still secret report from a former Nixon aide confirms what many have already suspected, that President Richard Nixon and campaign manager John Mitchell sabotaged Vietnam War peace talks in order to win the 1968 elections. In an oral history released by the National Archives, Nixon White House aide Tom Charles Huston elaborated on the president's involvement. He said... Over the years, as I've studied it, I've concluded that there was no doubt that Nixon was, would have been directly involved, that it's not something that anybody would have undertaken on their own. Huston created the report under orders from the Nixon White House to look into allegations that President Lyndon Johnson had bugged the Nixon campaign and halted the bombing of North Vietnam, all in an effort to fuel peace peace talks and orchestrate an October surprise to help Democratic candidate Hubert Humphrey win the election. Huston's report concluded that not only was LBJ's White House guilty of bugging the Nixon campaign, but that Nixon and Mitchell played an active role in derailing the peace summit in Paris by promising South Vietnam better terms if they hindered the peace talks. You know, that's the kind of thing that goes on a lot in politics, but a lot of people, of course, they don't want to believe it's happening. And understandably so. They want to live in a fairy tale world. And now to Ukraine, where President Petro Poroshenko has called for a truce in the eastern part of the country, a region where the government faces a rebellion by anti Kiev separatists. In a statement to security chiefs, Poroshenko says he has ordered government forces to regain full control of Ukraine's border with Russia this week. Once the frontier is secure, he says, a temporary ceasefire should be observed and efforts made to agree on a peace plan. Well, these clips from Mox News are not optimal. We may be letting Mox News go. From Welcome to the clips. Our Ocean Conference, hosted by the U. They're not ideal. What we want are quick news updates. Truth activists don't have time to watch long things unless they're of particular interest. We begin tonight with the latest on the crisis in Iraq. Today, the U.S. announced that 275 U.S. armed forces are deploying to the country to provide support and security for U.S. personnel and the embassy in Baghdad. The forces deploying for the purpose of protecting U.S. citizens and property, and if necessary, it is equipped for combat. This comes just after the heightened violence that's been sweeping the country as insurgents gain a stronger foothold in the north. Now, RT lately has been running with New World Order talking points on these issues, so I don't think that RT is alternative media anymore. Don't fall for that. They are they're controlled like everybody. They just don't make it as obvious.
Good morning, everyone. I'm Tamron Hall. This is News Nation. We get things started with some breaking news from the Supreme Court. The justices just dealt what's being called a rare blow to the gun lobby. The decision involves what's known as straw man purchases. NBC News Justice correspondent Pete Williams joins us now from outside the Supreme Court. Obviously, Pete, this starts with uh, helping folks understand in the first place what the straw man purchase or what a straw man purchase is. Right. Well, before they start running off about this, to my knowledge, straw purposes, I mean, straw purchases are already illegal. They're already at least, at least strongly frowned upon. And I think illegal in many, if not all states. But whatever, let's let this play. Cameron, and that's when someone buys a gun for someone else. Now, the question here before the Supreme Court is, is that illegal if the person you're buying it for is legally entitled to own a gun? Normally, these straw purchases are made in order to get guns for people who couldn't come in and buy them themselves. This case involved a, a former policeman in Virginia who thought he could get a discount for his uncle in Pennsylvania if he went to the gun store, showed his former police identification. He bought the gun and then gave it to his uncle. He was charged under this law. He challenged uh, the law, but today the Supreme Court, by a five to four vote upheld the law and said it doesn't matter whether the person you're buying it for is legally entitled to have the gun or not. You can't buy a gun for somebody else and lie about it on the form. There's a little place on the federal form that says, are you the person, are you buying this gun for yourself? He had checked yes. Now, Justice Elena Kagan, who wrote the majority opinion, said the law serves an important purpose of keeping guns out of the hands of people who are not legally entitled to have them, such as people with felony convictions or the, the uh, people People with mental illness. Four justices dissented. It was a five to four ruling. The dissenters were the more conservative members, Chief Justice John Roberts and Justices. Uh, That's just like politics, though. They do the five four split in order to keep the people deceived into thinking that there is a conservative and liberal side to the bench, and it's all BS. They're going to do what they're going to do no matter what, and they're going to make it look like it was close. Like it's any relief to gun owners to say, oh, well, at least it was a close vote. Folks, it is worse than you think. Alito, Scalia, and Thomas. So this, uh, this decision today upholds that law. The Supreme Court said it serves an important purpose. And, and Peter, just quickly, we mentioned this was a rare blow to the gun lobby. What was the argument from the other side here to justify what they saw as a, a defense for these straw man purchases? Well, they said that it shouldn't matter whether the person you're buying it for is legally entitled to have the gun or not. And in fact, they pointed out that the federal agency in, in charge of enforcing this law, the ATF, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, had changed its view over the years about what the purpose of the law was, whether it should be enforced only against uh, criminal straw buyers who were trying to get hands into the guns of people who couldn't legally buy them, or other purchases who were making it for somebody else. But the court said, uh, ATF has been pretty consistent in recent years about applying this law to everybody. All right, Pete Williams, the line for us with the breaking details from the Supreme Court. Thank you very much, Pete. And you we're bet. also following... Shut up. So if they've been pretty consistent in recent years, what do you need to pass a new law for? Pluto, the sometimes planet planet, may be hiding a pretty huge secret. Well, two huge secrets, actually. Astronomers in Spain believe that hiding behind Pluto, obscured from our view, are two additional giant planets. Spanish scientists in Madrid discovered the potential for the two massive celestial bodies. Okay, this is nothing but disinformation. It is a physical impossibility and it's just a, a distraction when we import the videos to truth broadcast network it's by the source unfortunately rt chose to run with that disinformation and it made it onto the network i'm sure some lesser intelligent people will be fascinated by it That's some breaking news uh, out of Iraq. Uh, and coming out of the White House, our senior White House correspondent, Jim Acosta, is joining us. What's going on? What are you hearing, Jim? 
Uh, well, Wolf, we can tell you that uh, in just the last few minutes, uh, the White House has released a letter that the president has sent to uh, the speaker, John Boehner. Uh, this is a uh, war powers uh, letter that was sent over to Congress, officially notifying lawmakers that the president has uh, authorized the deployment of 275 U.S. Armed Forces personnel. Those personnel will basically be in Baghdad there to provide security and support for U.S. personnel on the ground in Iraq, in Baghdad, and also to the uh, embassy in Baghdad. Uh, one thing we should point out uh, in this letter, I think it's very interesting, Wolf, uh, it says that uh, this force will remain in Iraq until the security situation becomes such that it is no longer needed. And an email from the White House Press Secretary Jay Carney uh, hit our inboxes in just the last few minutes, uh, making the note uh, that uh, these forces are coming into Iraq with the understanding of the Iraqi government, uh, with the support of the Iraqi government. So All right, let's be clear about a couple things here. ISIS is New World Order. This is state-sponsored terrorism, and the United States is the one sponsoring it. They're using weapons from the United States. This alleged terrorist organization is calling in airstrikes, and the United States is flying in to drop bombs. The terrorists, or the alleged terrorists, are telling the United States what to do. So, don't think anything you're getting from the television or from the news media in relation to the Iraqi situation has any truth to it whatsoever. And and there we again see RT running with New World Order talking points. RT brings us a lot of good information, but if it keeps up, RT will be removed from Truth Broadcast Network. All right, well, a still-secret report from a former Nixon aide confirms right, well, what many already have already that, suspected. So. That President Richard Nixon and campaign manager John Mitchell... We are changing the page. So we click on two, and boom, more videos. Uh, I have one item uh, at the top. Uh, Secretary Kerry, drawing on his long history as a leader on oceans issues, is hosting a major international conference over the next two days entitled Our Ocean at the State Department. The conference will be focused on three themes, sustainable fisheries. All right, we've got to look at the title on this one. So we'll just move this down. It says, the State Department's Jen... Pasaki mixes Iraq with Iran, gas with oil during briefing. It actually reminds me of, you know, how they'll get a female sportscaster talking about, you know, baseball or basketball, and they don't know what on the face of the earth they're saying. They think it's enough to just be pretty and ramble off some random basketball-sounding things, and they look like complete fools. If this woman doesn't know Iraq from Iran, she shouldn't be there. It's ridiculous, but hey, maybe she was a good community organizer, right? It's Monday, June 16th, 4 p.m. in Washington, D.C. I'm Amira David, and you're watching RT America. We begin today with the latest in Iraq. Violence is sweeping the country as insurgents gain a stronger foothold in the north. That looks like footage from another YouTube clip, doesn't it? From another RT clip. Look at her sitting here. Look how concerned she looks. I'm sorry, I'm done broadcasting for the night. I'll just roll the news. While some are calling it an immigration catastrophe, a surge of thousands of immigrants illegally crossing over the U.S.-Mexico border. Most of the new migrants are children from Central America. And while various media organizations from around the world are questioning what's going on, we're now learning that finding the answers to those questions may prove difficult. According to an email obtained by the Associated Press, Border Patrol agents in Texas have been instructed not to speak to media outlets. The email, which was written by an assistant patrol agent, orders more than 3,000 border personnel not to speak to reporters about the humanitarian crisis. The email allegedly went on to warn agents that they could be disciplined or even charged with a crime if they speak to the media. 
As the Obama administration struggles to accommodate the massive surge of immigrants, Vice President Biden is adding a stop in Guatemala to a planned trip in Latin America this week to discourage parents from sending their children to the U.S. On Friday, he's expected to emphasize that illegal immigration is not safe while meeting with top officials representing Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras. What the well, freak? He's making a tour? To Central America under the guise of saying don't send your poor, your tired, your huddled masses to the United States. And you know when he gets there, they're going to say the exact opposite. They're going to say the exact opposite. They're going to say bring him in. Oh my goodness. Jen Psaki messed up again. State Department's Jen Psaki struggles to defend Putin fucker remark. Wow. This chick is on fire. Let's check it out. I mean, wow. Jen, over the weekend, there were a couple instances, <clears throat> well, two instances that I'm aware of. One with the Ukrainian, involving the Ukrainian prime minister, who is someone who has had a great deal of um, interaction with the U.S., and also the foreign minister, who has also had a great deal of action with the U.S., making some rather interesting, to say the least, strident comments the prime minister referred to here come on in the matt briefing. you want to <laughs> no i'm not uh, going to take the i'll let you if you would like to no, but maybe you would you. like I to repeat it maybe you agree that. with it i don't know i will refrain from that um is this the kind let of me, is let this me, the kind of language coming from you know here come on in the matt briefing? you want to <laughs> no, I'm not uh, going to take the. I'll let you if you would like to. No, but maybe you would you. like to repeat it. Maybe you agree that. with it. I don't know. I will refrain from that. Um, is this the kind of me, is this me, the kind of language coming from? You know, this is a, these are these are officials who you guys have supported, and I just want to know. Do you, I mean this is something? Is this kind of language acceptable? Well, I think uh, one piece here that's incredibly important is to uh, remind you and everybody what the foreign minister was doing uh, when he made those comments, and he was. Uh, when he went to the Russian embassy, he personally went to the Russian embassy uh, in order to calm the protesters and succeeded in doing so. Uh, that was where he was. Uh, he's been uh, encouraging calm. Uh All right, whatever. That's that's boring. And just a few years ago, U.S. was openly saying we would consider a military strike to curb Iran. This was entitled, Evil People Have Plans. You ought to know that. I realized something recently. You know the difference between evil people and good people, villainous people and just people, crazy pants Dennis Miller and Saturday Night Live Dennis Miller? The difference is that evil people have plans. They always have a plan. Good people don't have plans or missions or agendas. We just stumble through life thinking we'll all treat each other right if given the chance. Evil people have dry erase boards and PowerPoint presentations and iPad apps to keep track of just how evil's coming along and whether it needs an evil course correction because this quarter's evil is 3% lower than last quarter's evil. Good people don't have plans. Good people have donuts and Sudoku. It's just donuts and Sudoku. All right? You want an example? There's an organization that consists of America's top business leaders getting together with government officials behind closed doors. During those, these clandestine meetings, the state governments across the country are told exactly which laws to enact in order to turn the nation into a far right wing hellhole, which looks and smells like Rush Limbaugh's bathtub. All right? It's called, yeah, get that image out of your head. It's called ALEC, which, contrary to popular belief, does not stand for a holes leading everything. <laughs> it stands for the American Legislative Exchange Council, and it's a really great organization if you're a fan of corporate profiteering, circumventing government, and fat faced white men legislating a woman's uterus. If you're a fan of those things, then Alec is a freaking amusement park with all the free nacho cheese you can eat. The way it works is Alec has modeled 800 bills to push through state legislatures in a painful yet consistent manner, like someone passing a kidney stone. About one out of every five of these bills do indeed become law. All right. What I'm noticing here is we need less RT, less news clips, and more activists. That would be 
my take on the news right now, and I can make these changes day by day. I want Anthony Anatello on here, for instance. I can't take all his stuff. It's too much. So I'll have to manually upload some of that time to time, but let's check this out. It says, FBI charges mother trying to keep daughter from being vaccinated. Is this the Godboldo incident from before, or is this something else? A Florida mother has taken a stand against vaccines by taking her toddler and going on the run. The FBI has just charged Megan Everett with flight to avoid prosecution. Just last month, the state of Florida charged her with kidnapping. Here's a story. Everett and the father of this two-year-old, Lily, they share custody. On the day Everett was supposed to drop Lily off, the father found a letter from Everett instead, according to court documents, and in part, this is what uh, it read. Quote, I love you and Lily loves you. You are a great dad. If I let them take her and vaccinate her and brainwash her, I wouldn't be doing what's right. I cannot let a judge tell me how my daughter should be raised. We will miss you, but I have to leave. My daughter deserves to be safe and happy, and I don't believe being on the run is, is you know, psychologically okay for a two-year-old. I do fear for my daughter's life. I do fear that she's not in a safe place. Um, you know, if she gets injured, I don't feel like she'd seek medical attention. All right, hold the fuck on. FBI charges mother trying to keep daughter from being vaccinated. What is the crime here? We're going to have to go to this actual story, which, well, we're just going to have to snatch the headline. But the question is simple. What, if any crime, was allegedly committed? Because I don't see one. If a mother wants to take the daughter somewhere... She can do that. That's her daughter, right? Ah, here we have, uh, what's his name? Vera, Michael Vera. Michael Vera's covering it. Very good guy. Another broadcaster. And actually, he's not covering it. It must be in here somewhere, but I don't see it. So we'll go back and find it somewhere else. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's Truth Broadcast Network. And I know what we have is the video. I'm looking for an article on this details I want the details well here we have CNN talking about it that's is the same clip we have on truth broadcast network isn't it so it's like the video clip has gone viral but it looks like maybe nobody's had time to write uh, an article on it yet so here we have Megan Everett 22 Worried two-year-old Lily's dad would vaccinate and brainwash the little girl, according to a note. The note did not say that she was worried about the father. It just said she was worried about her being vaccinated. So the state is putting the blame on the father. That's probably a deliberate thing. The little girl, according to the note, the fugitive mom re reportedly hoped to homeschool the toddler in the ways of Southern Confederacy. How do they bring up the Southern Confederacy in this? So now it's a, now it's a civil war thing. I mean, that's pretty audacious, isn't it? Well, here we have the information of Florida, a Florida mother, a fugitive Florida mother skipped town rather than letting anyone vaccinate and brainwash her two-year-old daughter, authorities said. Now, this woman is using the term brainwash, but really what she meant was brain damage. Just goes to show you how you need to be precise with your wording. Because brainwash and brain damage are two different things, and the sheeple will see this for brainwash and think the woman is, you know, paranoid or psychotic. Megan Everett, 22, is wanted on federal charges after she fled Sunrise, Florida with her daughter Lily, leaving a troubling note behind. You know, Megan Everett, for being a 22-year-old, really seems to know what's going on in the world, doesn't she? That or our information is really going viral. People are really learning the dangers of these, uh, these shots, you know, I was talking to my sister today about 
the Gardasil vaccine. She said she's not going to get her, you know, make her daughter take the Gardasil, Gardasil vaccine. Now that she was telling me how the doctors are pressuring mothers to do it, almost intimidating them to make sure they get the Gardasil. Anyway, Everton Lily's father, Robert Bowman, shared custody of the little girl until mid-May when Everett took off. Authorities said Everett had taken on the right-wing beliefs. See how they label? They label your thoughts. Your thoughts have been labeled right-wing. Everett had taken on the right-wing beliefs of her gun-nut boyfriend, Carlos Lester's about carrying weapons and upholding the tradition of the Southern Confederacy according to court records, which are, of course, nothing but allegations. A state judge wrote he was not overly thrilled with the psychology of the situation and urged Everett and Lester's to take care when it came to Lily and weapons. Not overly thrilled with the psychology. I mean, that's interesting just the way that's worded. The judge is not overly thrilled with the psychology. It's a, it's a veiled threat is what it is. A threat to, to determine that she's mentally ill. It is, however, a troubling issue to the court when the parties two-year-old child is living in a home with a mother and her boyfriend where the boyfriend carries a gun on his person throughout the day and where there are numerous other weapons and ammunition stored in the household. So the insinuation here is that if you have a weapon or you have ammunition, you cannot have a child in the house. So you are not allowed to be a gun owner a gun owner and a parent at the same time. You have to give up your gun or give up your child. That's what they're that's basically what they're insinuating. You know what? I can see this whole thing being a psyop because it it fits so well with the agenda. You saw the guy after the Santa Barbara shooting urging every parent to demand not one more. He said parent. Parent in relation to the guns. And what we see here is you can't have a gun and be a parent at the same time. Same exact line of thinking. So while we're sitting here thinking that they're targeting the truth movement or the patriots or the veterans, my read is they're going after parents. They're going after parents. Moving on. Everett's new beliefs included homeschooling Lily rather than sending her to preschool, Bowman said. She didn't want Lily to learn about black history, Bowman told the Sun Sentinel. She just wanted her to learn about the Confederacy. Everett's mother sided with Bowman claiming her daughter cut family ties after hooking up with Lester's in the state of mind. Isn't that interesting? That's the name, the exact name of Alex Jones' documentary on mind control. In the state of mind my daughter is in, Lily would be better off with Robert, so she gets to determine... The grandmother is trying to determine who the grandchild stays with. She's got no right. She says Lily would be better off with Robert. Pam Everett told the Sun Sentinel, I have four kids and Megan is my baby. I don't know what happened to her. Everett faces state kidnapping charges and a federal count of flight to avoid prosecution. Prosecution for what? Was she charged with a crime? I don't see any indication that she was ever charged with a crime. So what we're looking at here is just like when I am under arrest 
for resisting arrest. The young mom may have fled the state in disguise, authorities said. A tipster told police that Everett had previously visited Virginia with Lily and could be hiding out with Lester's family in Georgia or Virginia, according to the FBI. Lester's told police Lily, Everett and Lily were not coming back, but he didn't know where they went, according to court records. So if he didn't know where they went, who is making up all this information about where she went and who she's with and that he has a gun and so on? Bowman just wants his daughter back. I fear for her safety, he told NBC Miami, and I just wanted to come home and say, what do I tell you? If you ever have to pull a gun and shoot a cop, you write on that police report, I was in fear for my safety. Why? How is this line, in quotes, so perfectly lined up with what you would need there? Because it's a legal requirement for the state to come in and use force to kidnap a child. If one of the parents fears for the safety of the child they probably then gain some sort of jurisdiction. This is sick. The woman is the mother. She has a right to raise the child where she wants to. You can argue about whether or not the father should have custody. And that should be the issue here. Shouldn't be charged with crimes. That's wrong. So let's go back to the video and let that play out now that we've looked a little further into the story. Attention. Oof. CNN legal analyst and mom, Sunny Hostin, yeah. <laughs> joins me here. I mean, clearly this mother thinks what she is doing is in the best interest of her child. Um, that said, would prosecutors give her mom any, this mom any lenience because of that? You know, not at all, because now we're really talking about a kidnapping case, mm -hmm. right? And we're also talking about a father who clearly disagrees with that. Most right. courts, Brooke, do agree that you have to decide these cases based on what's the, in the best interest of the child. But certainly kidnapping, as, as the father just said, is never in the best interest of mm -hmm. a child. And um, the fact that she disagrees with having her child vaccinated is one thing. We've all debated that at one time or another. Could you know, that that's be used that against her? You know, I, I, I think that what is going to be used against her is the fact that she sort of flouted these court orders, these custody, this custody agreement, and took her child. But I will tell you, um, this is a debate that moms have often. This, mm -hmm. this uh, vaccination debate has been in the forefront, I think, ever since, you know, for Jenny years. McCarthy right. uh, for years sort of came out against it. Um, and I will tell you, there's no federal uh, vaccination law that doesn't exist. But each state does require um, certain vaccinations and immunizations for public schools if you want to put your child in school but there are always exemptions and that's something that this mother could have done there that are would medical be my follow -up. there are yeah. exemptions she should there have followed are... those paths absolutely yeah these guys these these women are apologists for the state and it should be mentioned at this point that the death care legislation known as Obamacare and now requires children that see the doctor to be trapped alone with the doctor with no parent present for like five minutes before each doctor visit or something. So this is the state taking control and taking possession of your children unabashedly in your face. We are stealing your children. Make no mistake about it. That's what this is. There are exemptions. There are medical exemptions. There are philosophical exemptions, believe it or not. There are personal belief exemptions. And so the law does provide for situations like this when a mom doesn't want to vaccinate her child, but you cannot just kidnap your mm -hmm. child. And I think what is really interesting is that in the note that she left, she said, you are a great dad. Well, mm -hmm. the court is. She says you cannot just kidnap your child if it's your child child 
How is it kidnapping? It makes no sense. They're redefining kidnapping. What if she just took her child to the mall? Did she kidnap her? What if she took her child uh, for a field trip to Cedar Point? Did she kidnap her? What if she left a note and said, you're a great dad, but we're going to Cedar Point and you were uh, you were working, so we went without you. Is that kidnapping? Where are you going to draw the line here? This is bullshit. Is going to look at that and say, so he's Hang a great a dad, right. <laughs> but you are still taking his child away from him. It, it's, it's not going to end well, I think, hmm. for this mother when and if, and hopefully they do find this child. Hopefully they it's not going to end well. That almost sounds like a veiled threat. I could see a standoff at a cabin in the woods in Virginia and the boyfriend and the mother ended up dead. They do we'll follow yeah. up and they do sunny hostin thank you so much thanks brooke and just ahead the u.s had all right let's let's go on with the news but we need to keep an eye on that story because honestly it looks like a psyop to me it really does there's a landslide not really news Yeah, let's see what this scumbag has to say. So why is this thought to be a good idea to actually bring Go. these high caliber weapons into U.S. streets? I don't think it's a good idea. High caliber weapons are extremely dangerous. They have a very high ricocheting velocity, and that means that innocent people are going to get killed and injured. They will be shot. They can go through doors. They can go through cinder block. They can go through metal car doors. And this type of uh, velocity is not necessary. I spent. All right. Not that I believe the police should have high caliber weaponry. But, you know, if you've shot a gun, some people should know you can shoot a 22 through car doors. Even through the whole car, a 22, and that's low, low caliber. So the issue isn't that it can go through cars. This guy's maybe he just don't know any better. Yeah, it'll go through more, but a 22 will go through a car door. He has no point there. A 22 will go through most doors because the modern doors, literally on the inside, they're cardboard. There's like a a cardboard. It's just sick. Your doors are worthless. Your doors are specifically built so that the police state can can kick them in and they don't even really have to kick too hard. Pretty soon they'll just go blow on your door and it'll come in and you won't be able to allow to have a reinforced door. That's illegal. 24 years in the Philadelphia Police Department, we upgraded our Smith & Wessons to Glocks, which are a very powerful pistol and they worked uh, very well. And there's no reason to have anything stronger than that, except in ex uh, exigent circumstances, which your SWAT team does have that type of weapon. But for anyone else, they're not necessary and they're dangerous. You know, Captain, one might ask, uh, will this equipment not obscure the lines between soldier and police officers, especially in those small communities where they're already being distributed? What's your take on that? Yes, it will obviously obscure the line. Okay, good guy. And maybe he's retired, I don't know, but he is given the truth about the militarization of the alleged police. And we're going to check out one or two more pages real quick for anything important, but we are going on 40 minutes. I'm going to try and keep these news videos a little shorter and do them a little more often. Um, subscribe to the YouTube channel, which I think is Truth Broadcast Network or truthbroadcastnetwork.com or something. Again, the landslide, the cop. What that means is we have two new videos that just came in. Russian, Ukraine, gas, spat, myths. Combat video, massive manhunt, Palestinian killed. Venture capital, Brazil football feast costs too much. Ukraine wants communism, not capitalism when it comes to gas. Yeah, Ukraine got their gas shut off. I mean, in one sense, it's funny, but in the other sense, 
Not so much. They need their gas, you know. Mob forces Ukraine MP to throw stone at Russian embassy and spray paint him. Yeah, this one we're going to have to check out. Okay, so this is some politician or something. This is what the Putin fucker comment that the woman was responding to earlier. It came from him. Whatever. And let's take a quick look just to see what new stories. I don't. I shouldn't use the word stories. What new information just came into the network? And well, I don't see any. I don't see any, so subscribe to the YouTube channel. These videos will be coming out on a daily or once a day or twice a day. And the website is the Truth Broadcast Network.com. We do have live broadcasters. Click the live tab for live broadcasters. We're live mostly at night. But we are on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I can click live right now, and there will be a video caster on air right now. Looks like it is death to the New World Order playing. And if you're a part of the truth movement, I mean, you should want nothing more than death to the New World Order. So... Subscribe to the YouTube and tune into the live shows and check out the news. And there'll be more coming.